Okay, can I print? Uh, yeah, just remember what you say can be heard. Okay. Try not to go. Here we go. All right. I would like to welcome all of you to our first ever electronic board meeting. I know that many of you have been using Zoom or GoToMeeting or some other platform to hold your division meetings. But this is new and exciting for many of us. So I'm glad to see everyone tonight. I wish we could have met in person. Hopefully the spring D train will be able to be met in person, done in person, either with hybrid D train or a full in person D train. Got your fingers crossed on that one. Um, with the help of Patrick Brown, Richard Miles, we will be live streaming this meeting via YouTube to our membership. A message to our membership has gone out via District Direct with information on how to register for our eight Eastern Region YouTube channel and then get alerts for this meeting. The district elections and future D-Train meetings, fun nights and Commodore's banquets, etc., will be... I'm hearing something. Well, we'll be, we'll be uh, done virtually as well with YouTube. I think this is awesome. It's, it's a great opportunity for us uh, to reach all of our members. Great work and a job well done to our production team, that's for sure. With COVID-19 still in the picture, Lynn and Richard Miles, Vicki Schuler, and Keith Blosser are all working together on moving forward with a plan for Division 18 to host a spring D train. If we are able to meet in person by that time, and I surely hope we, we can do that. Uh, at this time, I'd like to pass the virtual mic over to our DIROX, Commander Heyman. Commander? Hey there, good evening. Let me get you on speaker here. And um, all right, I was sideways before. I'm hoping I'm okay now. You're good. Um, all right. Hi, all. Um, I'm definitely excited to see some faces again and hear some voices. It's been kind of strange, of course, for me. Um, I'll, I'll just briefly say it's been, I've been really contemplating preparing for your award ceremony in D-Train and Western's D-Train thinking about this past year, my first year as DIROC. It's been interesting, but it's led me down a path that I don't think I would have been otherwise. It's forced me to have some different conversations about you know, how operations are chosen. The fact that I'm seeing every one of these activity requests um, means I'm seeing way more than I would have otherwise seen. I, I was really last year a little bit um, confused and frankly a little concerned that as DIROX, I didn't know what was happening. It was hard for me to have a feel of what activities were happening <clears throat> on the RBS side and out in the communities. So I got my wish, I guess, and now I see every one of those requests coming through. But it's helped me learn a lot more about the non-operational activities that are happening. And so that's been a blessing. And as, as you know, I like to think positively. So I think that's been helpful for me. And I would say, just as the Commodore just mentioned, the, the bright side to me in a lot of this is the forced movement towards online learning and online sharing means that certainly as time goes on, everyone's more getting more comfortable with these skills and these platforms. And I think ultimately, when you are able to go back to in-person meetings, having this hybrid option and always allowing, and I know you guys were doing that and streaming award ceremonies and things, but having all of the D-Train and many of the training sessions be facilitated remotely will of course reach many more of your members than are just currently attending D-Trains. So, that's exciting news. Uh, I know that uh, the Admiral spoke when, uh, last weekend at Western and Coastal D-Trains. He's ready to speak uh, to you all in October. 
And as usual, he has such high praise for what's happening. He can't uh, thank you enough for the work that's been done thus far. He, like the rest of us on the gold side, see and hear these dramatic stories of the increase in search and rescue cases, the increased numbers of voters out there. So your relevance is, you know, your presence is more relevant than ever. And in a, in a weird way, we need you more uh, as much as we need you to stay safe and stay home. So it's a, a hard balancing act. And I, I understand that everybody recognized that. I've been making an effort to engage Captain Beach a bit about some of your activities and make sure she's really aware of what what's happening. So she's a bit more aware, I think, than normal. I've talked a bit, they're working on picking a new Oxlo at the sector. So I've been engaging with them and helping them pick the right person for that activity, uh, which is good. Um, and as you would imagine, we're rolling down the end of a fiscal year, which is always challenging for me, but it's more challenging this year and we're starting to build the budget for next year. So we were able to purchase many of the requests that we received. Some of them didn't, some of it is all gonna shake out when the, the storekeepers can process it, whether they can get it through on time. But I do appreciate the effort uh, to put together some very detailed and thankfully appropriate lists of supplies and, and things that we could at least help with this year. So that those are coming in and Laura, Rhonda and John will be helping to distribute them as they come. Um, the last thing I'll say for now is that I'm, this is an exciting time. I know for many of you in elections and I hear a lot of complaints about it's hard sometimes to find folks and it's, you know, it's challenging, but I, I keep, it's exciting to see people still wanting to step up and do these jobs and work hard, especially after seeing your Commodore work his virtual tail off this spring. Um, the fact that you still have a chief of staff that cares enough and wants to try to be the Commodore and wants to be the Commodore is amazing because many people would walk away from this added headache. So I really commend any one of you that continues to want to serve, particularly in an elected position, um, at the XCOM level because it's been a hard year and it's been a long year and it's going to stay long. It's going to stay hard. And so um, I will do my best to continue to support and be a good cheerleader, but I, I can't thank uh, Commodore Stroop enough for his constant work um, and his careful review. All of those requests get his very careful and detailed review. And he's really thinking always about the safety of the community and safety of of your members. So please uh, on the side, maybe give them a, a little pat on the back. And when we all get in person together, we should maybe raise a toast to Mr. Stroop because um, he's really earned those shoulder boards for sure in these past two years. Unfortunately, he can't be life, he can't get his dues paid for the rest of his life anymore. But if we could, maybe I should put in a request that he does. But um, again, that's it for me for now. And I'm here to listen and ask any answer questions if there are more questions later on. Okay, well, thank you, Commander. I was really worried that you're going to take my, uh, you're going down the road to get my final comments. So, uh, real close, but uh, yeah, I, I, I survived. Thank you very much for the um, comments. I appreciate that. And you have to understand that the Commander is uh, working her tail off too, and she's got two districts, so. I cannot imagine, but I'm sure you're busy. Thank you again. Okay, we're gonna move on to the roll call. Roseanne. Yes. Uh, will you, yes, will you please uh, take the roll call for the ex common board? Do you want me to do an oral roll call? Yes. Because I've got the list on the side and we're only missing one person. Okay. But I'll, I'll run through it. Yeah, that would be good. I think. Okay. Dave Stroop, District Present. Commodore. Present. Um, Matt Meyer, District Chief of Staff. Present. Keith Blosser, District Captain East. Present. Skip Nunwire, District Captain West. Present. Chris Whitaker, District Captain South. Present. Randy Ventress, Immediate Past District Commodore. Commander Susan Heyman, Director. Present. Gerlinda Higginbotham, President of the Pasc Commodores Association. 
Present. Uh, Joseph Master Polito, Commander Division One. He was on the list. He he is still trying to join. He's having Zoom problems. Okay, but I did see him on the, the names. Uh, John Burrell, Commander Division Two. Present. Um, Michael Craig, Commander Division Four. Present. Douglas Field, Commander Division Five. Present. Anthony Norman, Commander Division Six. Yeah. Present. Hey, I, I, I finally got in. Yeah, you know, somehow miraculously I got in. Oops, I think I think they can hear me. Oh, I'm, I'm I got gonna, you. I'm gonna hang up. <laughs> Robert Brandon Steen, Commander Division Seven. Here, here. Jim Hoffnagel, Commander Division Eight. Present. Christopher Jones, Commander Division Eleven. Present. Mike Miller, Commander Division 12. Present. David Cox, Commander Division 16. Present. Vicki Schuler, Commander Division 18. Present. Rita Blair, Commander Division 24. Present. And we're all, they're all here except for Randy. So there's a quorum. Okay. Present. Is that Present. Randy? Yeah, I'm here. You're here. Okay, gotcha. Okay, thank well, you. Well, I didn't see his name. I'm sorry, Randy. Hundred percent. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, Roseanne. Uh, it looks like we have a quorum tonight uh, to be able to vote on a few items. Um, <clears throat> first up for review and approval are our fall 2019 district board meeting minutes. Everyone should have received the fall. 2019 district board meeting minutes from our district secretary of records, Roseanne DeRamos. Uh, are there any corrections at this time? I hear no corrections. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? I so move. Second. We have a uh, Second, we have a uh, first and a second. Let's put it that way. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. I'm not unmuted. Aye, Master Polito. That's an aye. Any nays? I'm hearing no nays. The motion is carried to approve the fall 2019 district board meeting minutes. Hey, uh, Dave, did Roseanne get the motion properly before you move on? Uh, Roseanne? What does that mean? <laughs> well, it usually record, you know, first and second. And yeah, then, I, didn't, I didn't get the second. I've got Chris for the, for, for the move it, but I don't have the second. Rita Blair, second. Okay, Rita, sorry there about that. Go. Okay. Okay. Uh, second up on the agenda tonight are the proposed changes to the 8th District Eastern Region Standing Rules, Appendix 3, regarding D-trains. Our district planner, Richard Miles, sent out the proposed changes along with information on why the changes are needed. This was sent in a PDF format along with YouTube videos explaining the needs for changes in the division hosting rotation and the financial change where the district Commodore will sign the D-Train contract with the hotel instead of the division commander. Are there any questions about the proposed changes to the district standing rules for D-Trains Appendix 3 called Part 3 in the emails. Any questions? I could. I, Go ahead. I do have a question. Uh, is, are you dealing with the revenue uh, slide deck at the financial planning at this time? Uh, yes. Okay. I do have a question uh, to bring up. On page five of the uh, 
think it's the uh, was the detrain revenue and expense of the slide deck. I, I'm going to have Richard answer these because I don't have that in front of me. Okay. Will, and if we need the slides, we can do that too, Randy. Retention of revenues, third item down. Meal profit loss from fund night. I'm sorry. Yeah, from fund night. I'm sorry. Let me back up. Uh, retention of re under the heading re retention of revenues. Third line down. Meal profit slash loss from fund night collected by uh, PT. Meal profit loss. The next line down. Meal profit loss. Uh, dash Como Banquet collected by PT. Those are paid. Uh, those are, I'm sorry, those will be given back, given to the division, right? Any profit or loss? I'm understanding that. Richard? You are right. Okay. Moving down to payment of expenses. Venue cost for hotel space other than lodging paid by, paid by DADR. Food contracted with hotel check is written by DADR. I'm confused as to why we would be writing the check for something and giving the profits, uh, if any, back to the divisions. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm unmuted. So we are writing, okay, so we're signing the contract. And we are collecting all of the revenues except for hospitality and any door prizes or drawings. Okay, so they don't, the di division doesn't have the money, district does. <laughs> so, okay. uh, does that answer the question? No, it doesn't. Uh, we write the check. If there's money, if there's profit for, from either one of those events, that goes back to the division? Yes. Yes, that, that has historically been the case in the past, and that's what we retained in here. It's not in the standing rules, by the way, but it's in these slides. Historically, the division has written the check. Yes. Correct? Yes. Okay, so historically, the division would get the mill profit slash loss from both events. Yes. Okay, my question is with this new change, why is, is the district writing the check and giving any profit or passing any profit or loss back to, to the division? Uh, well, it uh, probably is because nothing really has changed except that the district is now collecting the money, so we have the money to write the check. But essentially, nothing else has changed. So this is this is not coming out of district funds. No, no, it should be coming out of the revenues from the D train collected during during registration. That's correct. The cost of the Commodore's banquet and fun night. Yes. Okay, I'm just having a hard time. The way it's written, I'm having a hard time getting my head. Okay, in. so when when you fill out the registration online. Those, those monies for fun night and Commodore banquet are included in the registration. You send a, a check or do a visa payment and it'll be coming to the district. So we so, collect the money. So the district is break even on that then, right? Well, okay. The, the only reason you might have a loss. Yeah, district, it's just a pass through for district. It goes from the members through the registration to the district back out to the hotel instead of division collecting the money and holding it and writing a check the district's doing it that's the only difference will there be a audit so that division the the host division knows what those profit and or loss is before you write the check so that they can see that everything is on the up and up or do they just have to well there's there's a spreadsheet when you do the online registration that calculates everything so it's all right there every time somebody registers it self populates that spreadsheet and then we collect the monies and check off you know reconcile the, the monies collected 
the uh, versus the spreadsheet. So division, the host division will see the spreadsheet. Yes. Sure. Yeah. They have for the last one or two D trains. They've been involved with Patrick on that, and along with the division commanders, have had have had access to these spreadsheets. It's limited people, but the division has at least two, maybe three people, like the division commander, vice division commander, and the finance officer. <laughs> have access to look at, not change anything, but they have access to look at it. Dr. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that the host divisions are being treated fairly in that, you know, you're just not collecting the funds and saying, here's your portion. And, you know, the host division says, you know, we don't know what those calculations are. So as they can see the spreadsheet, then they know what the profit loss is. Yeah, and that, that's fair. Live. Right. Live. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? Back to you, Dave. Okay. Well, I, I'll put my two cents in, and this is not in my uh, my script here that I'm looking at. Um, but I do believe that this is very fair. I believe it's well thought out, and I would not in any way push something that I did not think was good forward and, and fair. I think it takes a lot of weight off the divisions. It takes a lot of stress off the divisions, and that's the, the main thing. Uh, again, everything is visible. So you have questions, you'll get answers. Uh, having said that, uh, do I have a motion to approve the proposed standing rules for D-trains? I do have one other question. Okay. Duncan had made a note for us. He said, did Richard, if he didn't incorporate D-train in annual budget, need to make a motion to make those changes? Do you know what he's talking about? Yes. So that's actually on the agenda. It may not be evident, but that's coming up next after okay. the standing rules. Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure we get that in there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Do I have a, um, a motion to approve? So moved. Rita Blair. Do I have a second? Second. Keith Blosser. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Rita. All in favor say A. 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 I. I'm sorry. I. I. In Canada, A. 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 <laughs> uh, those opposed say nay, please. The motion is carried. Thank you all. Uh, next, we need to authorize district funds to cover the next D train contract. This is to cover the obligated expense of, of a D-train, which can be in the neighborhood of $20,000. This vote is needed to allow a negotiated D-train contract to be signed by the next district commodore. The contract has cancellation and force majeure clauses to minimize the possibility of the district making payment for a D train and then not holding the D train and collecting the registration monies to cover the cost. I think COVID probably helped us with that one. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the proposed authorization to obligate the district funds for whatever up to you know, whatever it is, I, I, I don't have a number. So there's no number, but neighborhood of $20,000. Do I have a- Berlindi. Berlindi? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Do I have a second? Rita Blair, a second. second. Okay, I got Rita in there. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. The motion is carried. Thank you. Let's take a 10 minute break and uh, get ourselves ready. I, we've got some speeches to go through and uh, to listen to and 
uh, some other great stuff here. So uh, let's okay. take a 10 minute break, starting now. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Neither am I. <laughs> Took me 40 minutes to get uh, there. Dave and Richard, since we're on break, uh, one of the questions that a member asked me to put forth is, uh, did Richard consider running a survey monkey to see how many people watch the uh, presentations that he spent so much time and energy putting together for this meeting tonight to, to see what the effectiveness was. That's a good idea, but no, I, we haven't done that. If you might just, I mean, you did put a lot of work into tonight and maybe that might be something to give you future reference you know, if we have to do this again. <laughs> okay. Just think about it. That's good, Gerlindy. Thank you. Or that member. Tell the member thank you. <clears throat> yeah, that was Duncan. Of course that was Duncan. Duncan always has good comments. <clears throat> he thinks. Okay, thank you for that. Lynn and Richard, thank you for your help in my getting me here. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. I had to follow directions and they still failed. <laughs> Not through your fault. There's always, always one that's, that struggles and that sometimes me. Did you get it on? Okay. Uh, so okay, now I'll turn that on. Um, since we're on break, uh, and I see Dave and Richard are still here, um, representing the Past Division Commanders Association, and I don't um, want to interrupt any speeches, so I know all the candidates are here tonight, so I don't <clears throat> have any questions right now from my membership, uh, but if they do, they can send it to me by text or email really quickly. One of the questions that I would like for all of the speakers tonight to answer that are running for office. Uh, same question, so that I don't have to say it over and over again, is what would be their uh, most important two goals for the upcoming year that they are uh, running with their respective office that they're running for, if they could give me and my membership what their two and most important goals would be for 2021. And so that Hopefully they can answer that. And that way I won't interrupt the meeting 25 million times. <laughs> Is that good, Richard? Yeah, that, that's fine. Thank you very much. I'm still trying to get the YouTube working. So let me, let me go do that. Well, while you're doing that, Richard, I'll make a plug for the Past Division Commanders Association. Some of you present are uh, going to be stepping down from your division commander position. So you're eligible to become members of our association. So we hope that you will consider becoming a member. You have my email. I think I've sent everybody my email. So send me an email and we can talk via email or phone but we would love to have you as members of our association. How's that for a commercial break? <laughs> Very nice. This is Woody. I was gonna warn him that you're a good salesman too. It sounded good. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this is Duncan here. We have two choice plans for people who want to join. Uh, <clears throat> join for annual dues of $10. <clears throat> and uh, if you live uh, four, four years,
then you have paid what it would have cost you for the annual lifetime membership of $40. And it's good for as long as you live and stay in the auxiliary. <laughs> and those dues can be sent to Deanne and she'll be glad to uh, put them in the treasury. And as soon as she process them, you're a member of the organization. Okay, I'm calling it done on the YouTube, but uh, I've tried logging in like 20 times and it won't let me do it to kick it off. So we'll post it later, by the way. I'm showing one minute to go. So we're going to post to YouTube. Uh, if you haven't done it already, there was a district direct that came out like yesterday. Uh, you're welcome to share that with uh, your membership and uh, has uh, how to subscribe to that YouTube channel. Has the directions for that. Got it. Okay, uh, we've got the 10 minute mark. 
I can't <laughs> see you all, so I hope you're all back in your seats. So <laughs> anyway, um, it's time for the candidates' speeches and question and answer. The current XCOM and board may ask questions when the candidates are, do candidates are done. Candidates, you have two minutes to give your speech and after your individual speeches, we will hold a question and answer session. Gerlindy, uh, the president of the Past Commanders Association will be asking the questions for the Past Commanders Association. For those of you in the Past Commanders Association, you can ask your questions in a chat platform with Gerlindy. Mm -hmm. You can ask the questions of you for your members. Okay, proceeding now. The first up is Matt Meyer running for District Commodore. Matt is running unopposed. Matt, would you like to give a short speech to everyone tonight? Well, I don't, I don't know if it's a speech, but I'll, I've got a few things I want to, I want to say. Um, especially mm -hmm. Gerlindy, those are some good questions you brought up, and I, and I've got an answer. Or I've got my idea for part of it. Um, part of what I'd like to do for the next two years, or the first part of the next two years, is continue the work that Commodore Stroop's been doing. He's been doing an excellent job. I've learned a lot from him, from him and Commander Heyman. I really appreciate being able to sit back and, well, not really sit back, but, you know, watch what they do and how they act and and uh, how they communicate with each other. I want to continue that uh, relationship. Um, I don't accept this that we're going through as a new normal. I, um, I think it's a stepping block uh, that we've had. It's a hurdle that we've had to jump across. Um, I'd like to see us get back to a better way of the way we were doing things. And by that, what I mean is, <clears throat> earlier you heard Commander talk about how she's pleased at all the responses that she's been getting, all the non-operational requests she's been getting. But that tells me something. Uh, she's just now learning out, learning about how many things we do and how many people are involved on a personal level. That tells me that our reports are not getting to her uh, in one way or another, whether they're through the flotilla reports that are supposed to go up the chain or the SO reports that are going up the chain. I would like to see that communication strengthen a little bit um, because it's important for the gold side to know all that we do. Um, even especially on the operational end of it. Um, that's one thing I'd like to see us improve on quite a bit so that, that I know that they know we're out there, they appreciate what we do, but I don't think they see everything that we do. And I'd like to get that changed or at least improved upon. Um, I know we, we do a lot of reporting I hear members saying, you know, we, we send these reports in, they're supposedly going up the chain, but we're not hearing anything back. But I, I, you know, and when I was on the deck plate, you know, I felt kind of the same way, but it takes a lot of reporting going up the chain to get feedback um, the way I've seen it. So it's not that it's coming back, it's just getting filtered. Um, so that's what I'd like to kind of see happen. I, and like I said, I, I hope to be able to continue Commodore Stroop's um, part of his vision. Um, and, and, you know, I just can't say enough about what Commodore uh, has been doing this year. Um, it's just amazing the time in, in, that he's put in, especially since COVID hit. Uh, and, that's about my two minutes. So I also uh, want to say that I'm, I'm looking forward to working with all the division commanders uh, for the next two years, and especially the uh, 
the decaps and the uh, uh, gold side. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Matt. Um, are there any questions for Matt? I hear no questions. Thanks again. Second up is Chris Whitaker. Chris is running for District Chief of Staff. Chris is also running unopposed. Chris, would you like to give a short speech uh, this evening? Not really, but uh, I'll do it anyway. <laughs> uh, I was asked to run for Chief of Staff and agreed to, and I think I've got both the experience and can actually contribute something. I'm happy that Matt talked first because he gave me my first, what am I gonna do for next year? And that of course is to help Matt do uh, or ensure that there's better communication top to bottom. And my, my second goal, of course, is to work with Matt to be sure our district is the best it can be. And that's all I have to say at this point in time, unless somebody has some questions. Any questions for Chris? Could you make that any shorter? Yes, I could have. <laughs> well, you got it. We all know Chris. So, thanks, Chris. Any other questions? I, I don't want to cut somebody off. I don't hear any others. Thanks again, Chris. Okay, uh, now we're going to move to our candidates for district um, office, uh, district captains. Uh, next will be our district captains east. Let me get this right. I'm looking at my script for the office of district captain east. We have Carrie Campbell, Robert Brandenstein, and Anthony Waters. So first up, Carrie Campbell, would you like to give a speech? If I can get it unmuted. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, I'll give a little short one here. Um, for those who don't know, I'm the immediate past commander of Division II. Uh, I served in the Marine Corps and in the Army, and I retired from the Army Reserves. Uh, my current Positions at the flotilla level or the finance officer, marine safety officer. And I'm also the division uh, marine safety officer. Uh, another title I hold right now uh, that's probably my favorite thing is that I'm the auxiliary liaison officer for the marine safety unit here in Huntington. And um, a few of my qualifications are I'm an instructor, uh, auxiliary marine safety and management specialist, and uh, program visitor. I've uh, completed OxLAMs A and B as well as AMLOC, and I also have Regents Bachelor of Arts with a minor in history from Marshall University. Uh, as commander, when I was commander of Division II, I was tasked with uh, resurrecting this fledgling um, division. We only had one flotilla that was above 10 members, and I had less than 30 on, on the whole division role. Uh, so I, I wrote a proposal to the district with my plans and upon approval, uh, I began this execution of keeping my division alive. Uh, to keep this brief, uh, to help of each new member I recruited, uh, we were able to take a flotilla that had had no members at all and recruit 15 new, new ones that year. And as district captain, I found taking a similar approach. Um, I think we need to begin with retention of the membership we have. Um, I want these division commanders to set up some kind of recruiting efforts too that I would like to hear about. And see any help I can give, I will. Uh, and I'll, another thing that's important to me is keeping our members current on their qualifications. If they only, it doesn't matter if they have 10 qualifications, if none of them are current, it's not doing the community or our auxiliary any good. Um, and I'd also like to help the division commanders navigate anything, the obstacles or shortcomings they may run across. Um, I guess in closing, uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be considered for the position of DCAP East, and I'll serve, serve divisions 2, 6, 7, and 18 to the best of my ability. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Kerry. Uh, any questions for Kerry? Hearing no questions, next we have Robert Brandenstein. Um, Thank you, Commodore. Um, yeah, I'm Bob Brandenstein, a long time voter, and emphasis on the long, uh, who is uh, running for district captain. And I asked for your vote, and uh, here's why. 
for me, uh, serving in any of these elected positions in an organization like the auxiliary is all about giving back. I've grown to love being out on the water and especially under sail. There is something almost sublime about the feeling that you get when the boat moves through the water in concert with the wind and waves and without an engine. So it's just a wonderful experience. But then I come to these experiences naturally, maybe on my family boat, not on your life. I was born into a lower middle class family here in Pittsburgh. And while the rivers were only a few miles away from our home, a boat, you gotta be kidding me. Our family didn't even have money for a car for a lot of years. Now, I owe these wonderful experiences on the water to volunteers who gave their time and resources to me and, and my wife, Jane. She, when she was a, a, a Sea Scout growing up. Uh, from those days to these days, we've been both, uh, we've both been giving back and we will do so until the ravages of age uh, catch up with us. And earlier this week, I thought maybe that time had come, but it's, it's whatever was ailing me seems to have passed. So with us, it's all about give back. Again, I ask for your vote, and if elected, I'll do my dead level best to perform the duties of district captain to the best of my ability. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. Any questions for Bob? Um, yeah, this is Gerlindy. Did you have two goals for 2021, if you're elected? Robert? <laughs> Did I have two goals for 2021? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Hearing none, let's move on to um, next. We have Anthony Waters. Yes. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, some of you know this is not my first time running for a uh, <laughs> for a district position. Um, so I just want to point that out that I'm not I'm not afraid to take chances, right? And I, you know go out on the limb and think outside of the box. Um, I do have a, a um, some comments here. Um, I know I only have two minutes um, to speak tonight. Uh, I do appreciate everyone's you know time to let me uh, speak. When I first joined the auxiliary, I did not realize the impact that we have not only to the boating community, but also to the Coast Guard. Uh, in my time in the auxiliary, it's become very apparent that we are indeed one team, that's Team Coast Guard. And in many cases, the lines between an auxiliarist and an active duty or reserves um, just melt away and we're all, we're all just together. Um, for me, open and honest communication is, to, is one of the many ways to make our organization uh, stronger and help it to grow. You know, of course, telling the truth and being true to your word is absolutely the best policy. There will be times with, um, when information needs to stay private and confidential, but if I could share something, I will, I will and make sure I give the, uh, the proper credit. So in other words, I won't steal people's ideas and count them as my own. Uh, professionally, I've worked as a, in IT as an infrastructure engineer. Uh, this role really does necessitate being always ready as well as extremely flexible requires quick thinking and developing solutions on the fly while maintaining compo composure and professionalism. Um, as, uh, as, the, as DCAP East, I will continue my policy of sharing when I can, when I can, and more importantly, making resources available as needed. Uh, my goal is not to simply sit back and wait for people to come to me, but to actively involve division commanders, vice division commanders, district board, and um, all others as needed. I'll draw upon my professional auxiliary experiences as well as my experiences with other organizations to provide uh, some quality leadership while, of course, still having fun. Because if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. Um, you know, uh, my auxiliary qualifications, anyone can go look up. I'm happy to answer any specific questions about them. Um, but I am very proud to be part of this organization. And I uh, do appreciate the opportunity to become the next district captain. Uh, with that, I will, uh, I'll take any questions. Um, same question to you, Anthony, that I asked Robert. This is Gerlindy. Yes. 
So I, I do have I do have um, some goals. One is um, you know to increase member involvement, right? I know in in our division we have a lot of we have we have lots of things lots of things happen, but it's only by a few people. So we want to get more people involved in doing different things. Because auxiliary has something for for everyone, right? Um, the other the other goal is um, to just improve communication up and down. Um, I think communication is communication is, is has, has been good, but it can always be better, right? So just um, having it a little more of an open forum sometimes, and it be uh, have more transparency where possible. There we go. Next question. Any other questions for Anthony? Okay. Thank you very much, Anthony. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll now move to our candidates for District Captain South. We have Ron Monu and Joe Clary. First up, Ron. Yeah, thanks, Commodore. My, my name is Ron Bono. I'm with Division 12 out in Knoxville, Tennessee, Flotilla 1205 on Norris Lake. Thank you for this opportunity to run for position of District Captain South. I also wish to express my appreciation to Joe Cleary and the other candidates for standing up and offering their time and experience for each of the district positions. In addition to my resume, let me offer the following. I take seriously the oath that I took when I joined the auxiliary and for every office of responsibility that I have accepted. Doing so, I feel is an obligation to serve the Coast Guard, the auxiliary, my fellow auxiliaries, and our communities. I believe in people, my fellow auxiliaries. It's with them our missions are accomplished our auxiliary grows and improves. I believe in leadership for direction and focused objectives. We all need and want leadership. It's critical to achieving unity, attitude, and accountability for success and personal satisfaction of accomplishment. Quality, quality communication, either written or verbal, in both directions is essential. Quality listening is a major component of communication. I believe in following through and following up. I believe in professionalism in our communication visibility, performance, and interaction. Teamwork is a strong, visible message with the public. It's a way of developing doers and future leaders while improving ourselves and our missions. It's a form of learning and improving from one another while on the job. Recruitment and mentoring are critical and a priority. I believe in succession planning for our members, officers, and leaders. I do not think leadership should be left to chance. A source of pride for our members is getting credit through recognition. Providing correct ignition is difficult, but an important mission. True accomplishments need to be recognized. I feel I'm prepared for this position from my experience in the Marine Corps, my career in construction management, and the past 11 years in the auxiliary. There's still more I need to learn, but I believe I have developed my leadership, communication, and people skills to perform the responsibilities of the position and support the division commanders in our district leadership. As far as goals, growing, it's, it's a little bit early if we're talking about this position, but I think that I would certainly work with division commanders on focusing on our existing me uh, membership or re-motivation, uh, encourage recruitment, and start a discussion on succession plan planning, not only for the flotillas, but also uh, for the division. I appreciate this opportunity, and I hope that my resume and these thoughts offer some insight for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Any questions for Ron? Okay, hearing no questions, uh, Joe Clary. There we go. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Joe Clary. I'm running for the office of uh, District Captain South. Uh, a little bit about my work career that will help you understand uh, what I've done and my capabilities in the future. Um, my first half of my career, 20 years, was as a test engineer and environmental lab supervisor for aerospace companies. Uh, we perform reliability, uh, safety of flight, and qualification tests. Um, also supervised up to 15 engineers and technicians. The second half of my career was as a quality assurance manager um, for both industrial and automotive companies. 
um, helping to implement various quality systems such as uh, uh, total quality management for Q1, uh, Deming's 14 points, and uh, implementing ISO 9000 in the different companies I worked for. Um, along with that, I learned a lot about uh, statistical process control for process improvement and reliability. So that was my work career. I'm now retired. Um, the Coast Guard background is 15 years in, with Redstone Flotilla <clears throat> in North Alabama. Uh, currently, I'm holding a flotilla commander position. Uh, in the past, I've been elected to both uh, vice flotilla commander, flotilla commander, division vice, and division commander. Uh, appointed offices have been as uh, much as the DSO CM and various flotilla communications, member training, marine safety, and operation uh, FSOs. Current qualifications, uh, which help also in uh, marine safety, is uh, boat crew coxswain, instructor, RBS, uh, boat, recreational boating visitors, TCO, and uh, vessel examiners. Um, other qualifications within the auxiliary have been, I've taken the uh, OXLAM and AMLOC classes, basic qualification two, uh, introduction of marine safety and environmental. Uh, my ISO, or ICS resume goes back to the standard uh, 100, 200, uh, 800, and 700 along with uh, ICS 300, 400, and uh, ICS 358 COM-L. Um, to let you know, uh, also my total career, I've always been a volunteer in some organization. Early after uh, college, I volunteered with the American Red Cross and became the team leader for the emergency first aid team uh, in Ohio which provided uh, first aid stations to various public events along with disaster relief first aid. Uh, I was with the American Red Cross for 20 years before moving to Alabama. Uh, in Alabama, I re um, became an EMT firefighter and volunteered with Trinity Volunteer Fire and Rescue and also became a CPR instructor. All those are groups that I've worked with along with the Coast Guard Auxiliary that are volunteers. Um, <clears throat> the uh, missions with the Coast Guard Auxiliary to me have been the key support has been with the recreational boating safety. And uh, I've been able to accomplish uh, getting recreational boating safety out to the public by uh, uh, when I'm a coxswain on the water, anything you run across a boater. Uh, in class as an instructor and also while doing VEs and program visits. Um, to let you know, uh, the rewarding part for me in the auxiliary has been promoting the RBS program in our area and supporting Coast Guard missions. Um, highlights in my mm. career have been successful operation missions and having someone come back to you later on and say, Thanks for helping them become a safe, uh, safe, safer boater. Um, I feel I can best serve as uh, Captain South um, because of the basic concepts I've learned in quality assurance and setting goals in the ISO standards. And that is to plan, do, check, and act. And this is part of what we see also in the uh, risk management and that revolving circle, uh, you keep repeating until you solve your problem. The other thing is I've my vast experience in volunteer organizations like the American Red Cross, American Heart Association, Trinity Volunteer Fire Department, and the Coast Guard Auxiliary. Um, my commitment to the RBS program along with a past supervisory and management skill will help enlighten and inspire uh, the Southern divisions to raise the bar. Uh, the key is not to micromanage, but to lead by example, mentor, help others with difficulties that may arise and be a source of information for them. Um, if anybody has any questions or would like to review any of these items, please let me know and I'll turn the floor back to Dave. 
Okay, any questions for Joe? <laughs> it's Gurlindi. Uh, Joe, do you have two goals for your area for 2021? Uh, currently, uh, as Fotilla Commander, we have uh, goals. Uh, if I'm elected as Captain South, I'll have to review what uh, not only the uh, division commander, or I'm sorry, dis district commodore would like to see accomplished and help get that and set a goal and also uh, collaborating with the uh, uh, divisions in the south as to what is important to them and also set a goal at that time. So, but as far as flotilla this last year, it has been retention uh, because of the COVID-19 and trying to keep members interested and uh, uh, make sure they uh, are members next year. So, hope that helps you a little bit, Glenda. Margo. Right. Sorry. Okay. All right. Any other questions for Joe? Okay. Hearing none, uh, we'll move on to District Captain West. Running for District Captain West, we have Skip Dunweiler and Robert Wood. Uh, first up, Skip. Uh, thank you. Um, I welcome the opportunity to uh, 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 be reelected as uh, D Captain West for 2021, and I feel well qualified for all of those tasks. I've been an active member of the U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary since the 29th of November 2005, and have performed as flotilla commander, vice division commander, division one commander and D Captain West for this path for this year. I have also uh, become flotilla and division staff officers for communication services, human resources, public affairs and publications. I am also an ADSO MS and an ADSO HR. My certifications include instructor, trainer, uh, Marine dealer visitor, Marine environmental education specialist, public affairs, where I'm a public affairs one, uh, vessel examiner, uh, first aid, and CPR. I'm also a uh, coxswain. I was a coxswain until my double hip replacement uh, seven years ago. Uh, my active hours are approaching. 15,000 hours. I'm presently a retired mechanical engineer and hold a patent with RCA for a snap together plastic monitor chassis. I am also active in the Boy Scouts of America since 1958 as Cub Master, Scout Master, Explorer Advisor, and chairman of, chairman of many of their committees. I'm a vigil member of the Order of the Arrow and have taken a leadership course called Wood Badge and have served on the Wood Badge staff and was named Assistant Director of Wood Badge for Crossroads of America Council. Uh, I am active in veterans groups, having been served in uh, the uh, Air Force from 1960 to 1964. I'm a member of the American Legion since 1968. I've been served as post commander 200, which uh, served about 200 members, a uh, district commander, which served about 5,000 members, and the state of Indiana vice commander, which served about 100,000 members. I'm also active in the 40 and 8, a veterans group since 1993, and served as chef de gare, which is French for station master or commander, which is serving approximately 200 people. I have also been active in my uh, uh, church, serving on many committees and uh, performing readings to the congregation. I will consider it an honor to continue as D Captain West. Thank you. Thank you, Skip. Uh, questions for Skip? It's Gerlindy again. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, how do you feel you did with your goals for this year? I know. COVID interrupted a lot of our goals, but how do you feel you did in spite of that? And do you have goals for next year 
if you're retained? It, it was a struggle uh, because I had uh, specific things I wanted to do, but the, the COVID uh, slashed many of those. Uh, but I, I was able to do many things. Uh, the Indianapolis Boat Show was one of them. Uh, I have chaired that uh, for some time. In the Indianapolis Boat Show, we ended up, we picked up uh, many new members and uh, got people signed up for uh, recreational boating safety. And what about 2021? 2021, I'm going to uh, uh, push on, make certain that, uh, uh, you know, once we are off of this, I have many other things I'd, I'd like to do in the uh, in the RBS uh, area. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm, uh, it, it's just a matter of many of the things that uh, the Commodore wants, I'll be there. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Gerlendi. Any other questions for Skip? Hearing none, next up is Robert Wood. Bob? Hello, Hello everyone. Thanks for hanging in there and uh, waiting for me. I, um, I'm glad to be here with you all tonight. It's uh, exciting. This is my first Zoom meeting. Um, so with, with a microphone, so I'm usually trying to type like crazy. Um, I've been a member for the auxiliary for 10 years. I'm currently the immediate past division commander for division five in the Cincinnati area. I, I, I held a, div a division commander position for three terms. I spent four terms at the flotilla commander. I am currently the flotilla commander for flotilla five, four. I've spent five years as the SOOP. And in that position, we, um, we have some big water on water events that uh, I pretty much handle. It's uh, Paddle Fest, the largest group of paddle craft in the United States. We have that uh, day, of course, it wasn't this year. We also have River Fest at uh, Labor Day weekend for fireworks, 500,000 people, up to 2,000 boats on the water. We work hand in hand with the uh, gold side with that, as also with uh, local uh, fire and rescue and such. I'm, um, I'm also a past SOVE and SOPV. I'm retired so I have the time to uh, spend on these kinds of things. I am um, I'm a boat crew trainee. I am a boat facility owner and also a radio a mobile radio facility owner. I am a TCO. I um I believe in keeping the the, the channels of the information flow open flow up and flows down you keep keep the members happy if they know what's going on because if they don't know what's going on they're going to make up something on their own and it's i can guarantee it's not going to be what we want it to be i um one of the things that um for gerlindy two of my goals would be once i want one is i really want to promote mentoring i think mentoring is just so important We've got so many new members coming in and so much experience that's just there that we don't want to waste it. And I want to reach out to the paper members. We all have them, paper members. They pay their dues. You never see them. You never hear from them. You don't, sometimes you don't even know what they look like anymore. I'd like to reach out and try to bring them back in, see what's needed. What are they missing? What can we do for them? Um, as I said, also, once this COVID lifts and I'm I'm thinking like Matt, I don't believe this is the new normal. I think we're going to get back to doing what we did only like, you know, he said more, um, more streamlined, more just better. But I'm ready to travel to go to the different divisions if needed. And um, I'll do my best for division one, four, five and eight. And um, Basically, that's what I have. So if there's any questions, uh, I'll take them. Are there any questions for uh, Robert Wood? Hearing none, thank you, Woody. 
You're welcome, and thank you, everyone, for listening. And thank all of you uh, for putting your hats in the ring. Uh, it's a wonderful job, and you'll enjoy it. Thank you. Uh, Patrick Brown, Patrick, would you please give us, give the XCOM board and the candidates an overview of the upcoming election scheduled for Saturday, 26th of September? I will certainly do my best. Good evening, everybody. If I uh, sound a little bit uh, broken up, I am in the uh, middle of an undisclosed location in a car on a highway on a road trip. So I'm working off a hot spot here. So I will defer to Richard if my uh, my call cuts out. Um, just give me a thumbs up or thumbs down, Richard, and then I'll defer to you if, uh, if I start to drop out here too much. Um, certainly we can uh, count on one thing for this year and that's to be a year of firsts. And uh, the election process this year is gonna be a, a first uh, as well. Um, the good news is we are not the first ones to go through the election, um, the electronic election process. We will be number eight or nine by the time it gets to us uh, a week from this coming Saturday. Uh, and the process is actually quite streamlined from what it was the first time that that was ever done uh, almost two years ago. Uh, and really the process starts with the credential letters that uh, were distributed earlier this week. I know there was a little bit of confusion in terms of what credentials were required uh, to attend this meeting versus the credentials that were required for the 26th. Uh, and the credential letters that came out for me were 100% uh, isolated uh, for, uh, for the 26th. Uh, that process has been uh, designed to be as, as easy as we can make it. Uh, and everybody who is a voting member has been issued two bits of information, your voter ID and your voter key. Uh, that information, now that it has been issued, cannot be changed. Uh, so now that we are in the credentialing, uh, testing, and validation phase, um, we need everybody to go through and cast the test vote. Uh, and we've got 31% so far who have gone through and seen some pretty wacky questions. Uh, thank you for participating. For those of you who have cast your test vote, uh, I've written quite a few of these over the last several weeks and some of the questions get a little bit dull and some of the coffee that I brew is a little bit too strong and that's where some of the crazy questions come from. So thank you for playing along and casting your test vote. And that process is simply just to make sure that the credentials that you've been issued uh, are correct uh, because you'll be utilizing those credentials from really this point on. So when we get into the election process, what will happen is there will be a moderator that will walk us through in a Zoom call uh, the actual process itself. Uh, you'll be guided to go and cast your vote. And at that time, there'll be a, a slide that'll pop up on screen that'll say, go ahead and visit this website. And that website, as you can see that, uh, Richard, thank you for putting the, the content up, is cgauxiliary. Uh, excuse me, cgauxiliary, d8er.electionrunner.com. When you visit that website, you'll be asked to enter uh, your election or your voter ID, your voter key. Uh, at that time, there will be only one open election that you can cast a vote uh, in. You'll make your selection and then you click on, uh, on submit and that is the entire process. So you'll be guided through uh, the entire process verbally and then there'll be a graphic uh, backup as well. Uh, the process is a little bit longer than experience in person, and that's simply because the OLA that each round of elections does need to be open for 10 minutes. So if we have, uh, let's say, five elections, that's 50 minutes. Uh, we do not have to go through and do a formal cast uh, process for uh, DCO and chief of staff because we know that those are uncontested, so that'll be a lot quicker. Um, but uh, I just got a notification here that my signal is a little bit weak, so I'll wrap this up and make this pretty quick. Um, I would just ask everyone to refer to the credential document that I sent out in advance. Um, please go through, cast your test vote. If there's any issue with that, shoot me an email. Uh, my information is at the bottom of that credential letter. As long as you're able to log in and <clears throat> test vote, that is all that you need to do at this point in time. When we get into the call on Saturday, again, there'll be a moderator there to verbally walk us through the process, and there'll be some visuals to actually guide you through as well as the countdown timer so that we all know where exactly we are within that process. Uh, I am happy to field any questions I can, uh, time permitting, Commodore, as well as my hotspot cell service uh, permitting as well. Okay. Well, thank you, Patrick. And uh, that is uh, Saturday, the 26th of September. So thank you very much. Um, any questions for Patrick? 
Okay. We are almost to the closing. So um, I'm gonna give you uh, a few closing comments. Um, not anything as long as we would normally do. This is a pretty brief. So, but uh, I think some important, some important facts. Um, for our upcoming district elections, sub, uh, Saturday morning, 26 September, 2020, these members will be behind the scenes of our elections. Patrick Brown is our election administrator. Duncan Wilkinson will be the moderator. Richard and Lynn Miles and Duncan will be the tally committee. Roseanne DeRamas, Secretary of Records. I wanna give a big thanks to our production team for the hard work, very long hours, dedicated to research, conference calls, and email traffic. Special thanks to Patrick for all of his hard work, putting together a lot of the format and teaming with Richard to provide us tonight's virtual meeting and our upcoming elections. And just a note that Patrick's work with us, D8, when we had to do an election in the spring of 2019, most of you were there uh, to replace our chief of staff. That's what Patrick was referring to. And that has become, that is the tool. That is what he developed. That, that is the tool that was used for the national elections. And that is the tool that's being used now. So Patrick, thank you. We all appreciate it. Special thanks to Lynn for all of her hours, making phone calls, emailing, and doing a lot of behind the scenes tasks while keeping Emily, her right hand back up in the know of everything. And that's, that's extremely important. That's teaming, uh, <clears throat> that's creating a backup. I don't wanna say replacement, but uh, uh, you know, someday we all need to be replaced. So um, thanks Lynn. And uh, Lynn keeps me in a straight and narrow track. I know he, she kept um, uh, Randy there as well. Uh, so uh, doing a great job. Thank you, thank both of you. Uh, special thanks to, um, to Roseanne for keeping the minutes for us and to um, Deanne Roddenberg who is always ready and there for us should Roseanne not be available. She's, uh, she's the backup there. Uh, special thanks to Duncan Wilkinson for being our moderator during our district elections and Emily for backing up both Duncan and Lynn. It's been a tough year with an unknown and extremely dangerous virus. My first priority and main focus was and is to keep us all safe and capable of returning to the highly respected and regarded United States Coast Guard Auxiliary. A tough road to follow and we are not home yet, but we are learning how to not only cope with COVID, and I think this is really important, we're, we're learning how not just to cope with what we have, but to actually learn new skills such as virtual meetings. Our new leadership for 2021, 2022 will have many never before opportunities. Some will call them problems. I call them opportunities. But problems grow to be opportunities. All we have to do is to look for what our actions have given us. And then when the smoke clears, apply our new learnings and ways of doing things. COVID prevented us from having meetings to this point. It's prevented us from doing many other things. So what did we do? We learned how to do meetings differently. We learned how to focus on maybe things that we hadn't focused on before and things that we could get approvals for and we could go out and work. So, and do good and save lives. 
COVID has forced us into a virtual electronic world. And that is the world where the younger generation lives and the world where our new members reside. Think about that. Those prospective members see clearly what we do. In fact, I've seen new members in my flotilla who are younger than I, most of them are, younger than I, and they really took a hold of not the opportunity, the need, the need that was there to keep us glued together, to keep us moving. They, they ate it up. That's all I can say. That's an opportunity. We need to think about that because um, maybe when COVID's all gone and we don't have to have electronic meetings, we might want to still have some electronic meetings in between other meetings. We may want to think that way because that's the technology that's out there. That's what people are living with. Thank you all for attending and participating tonight. Stay safe and I hope to see you all at our elections on September 26. And with that, I'll say good night to all. Thank you very much. Good night to all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Good, night. Good, night. Good, night. Good, good job, Tyler. Good, good job, sir. Good job, sir. Right. See you, Rick. Bye, Chris. All right. Bye bye. See you later. Bye bye.